Hello and welcome to Storytime. Today we're going to read some spooky books for Halloween. But first, before we start reading, let's review some of the letters that we've been learning about in our other story times. So we've been learning about H and the letter S and the letter P. Now, hmm, let's see. With your finger, can you draw a line in the air or point to the thing that starts with the letter H? We have the word hat right here. Which one of those pictures is a hat? Can you draw a line with your finger in the air? Let's go right over here. And that's a fun Halloween hat. It's a purple witch's hat. Good job. What about S for scarecrow? Do you hear the beginning sound? S and scarecrow? Which one's the scarecrow? Draw a line with your finger. Good job, you found it. And the last one is pumpkin. That one's probably easy for you. Right here, there's the pumpkin. Good job. You really know your letters. Our first book is called Let's Play Monsters by Lucy Cousins. Have you ever pretended to be a monster? It can be a lot of fun. My name is Gabriel and I am three. I like to play with monsters, but they can't catch me. Come on, Josie, I want to play. You chase me and I'll run away. You be a, great, a monster who is green and scary with sharp pointy teeth and feet that are hairy. Munch, crunch, scrunch, I'll eat you for my lunch. Hee hee hee, but you can't catch me. Come on, Uncle Rufus, I want to play. You chase me and I'll run away. You be a monster who's very, very big, with horns like a cow and a tail like a pig. Oink, oink, moo, I'm chasing you. Hee hee hee, but you can't catch me. Come on, kitty cat, I want to play. You chase me and I'll run away. You be a monster with long, sharp claws, all scritchy and scratchy on your big yellow paws. Hiss, hiss. Roar! I'll chase you out the door. Hee hee hee, but you can't catch me. Come on, Nona, I want to play. You chase me and I'll run away. You be a monster made of bright pink jelly with big round eyes and feet that are smelly. Slop, slap, slop, I'll gobble you up. Hee 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 hee, but you can't catch me. Come on, flower, I want to play. You chase me and I'll run away. You be a monster with a big yellow nose and long green arms and muddy brown toes. Fee, fi, fo, fum, I'll tickle your tum. Hee 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 hee, but you can't catch me. Come on, Mommy, I want to play. You chase me and I'll run away. You be a monster with spikes on your back who eats little boys with your teeth that are black. Gobble, gobble, gulp, I'll eat you up. Hee 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 hee, but you can't catch me. Oh, yes, I can. I'll gobble your toes and I'll nibble your nose. Now you be a monster with a funny green head who is tired and sleepy and ready for bed. Monster kisses, one, two, three. I love you and you love me. That's 
the end of that one. Our next story is called Room on the Broom. The witch had a cat and a hat that was black and long ginger hair in a braid down her back. How the cat purred and how the witch grinned as they sat on their broomstick and flew through the wind. But how the witch wailed and how the cat spat when the wind blew so wildly it blew off the hat. Down, cried the witch, and they flew down to the ground. They searched for the hat, but no hat could be found. Then out of the bushes on thundering paws, there bounded a dog with a hat in its jaws. He dropped it politely, then eagerly said, as the witch pulled the hat down firmly on her head, I am a dog, keen as can be. Is there room on the broom for a dog like me? Yes, cried the witch, and the dog clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick, and whoosh, they were gone. Over the fields and the forest they flew, the dog wagged his tail, and the stormy wind blew. The witch laughed out loud and held on to her hat, but away blew the bow from her braid, just like that. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the bow, but no bow could be found. Then out from a tree with an ear-splitting shriek, there flapped a green bird with a bow in her beak. She dropped it politely and bent her head low, then said, as the witch tied the braid in her bow, I'm a bird as green as can be. Is there room on the broom for a bird like me? Yes, cried the witch. So the bird fluttered on, the witch tapped the broomstick, and whoosh, they were gone. Over the reeds and the rivers they flew, the bird shrieked with glee, and the stormy wind blew. They shot through the sky to the back of beyond, the witch clutched her bow, but let go of her wand. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the wand, but no wand could be found. Then all of a sudden, from out of a pond, leapt a dripping wet frog with a dripping wet wand. He dropped it so politely, then said with a croak, as the witch dried the wand on the fold of her cloak, I am a frog as clean as can be. Is there room on the broom for a frog like me? Yes, said the witch, so the frog bounded on. The witch tapped the broomstick, and whoosh, they were gone. Over the moors and the mountains they flew. The frog jumped for joy and the broom snapped in two. Down fell the cat and the dog and the frog. They went tumbling into a bog. The witch's half broomstick flew into a cloud and the witch heard a roar that was scary and loud. I am a dragon as mean as can be, and the witch with french fries tastes delicious to me. No, cried the witch, flying higher and higher. The dragon flew after her, breathing out fire. Help, cried the witch, flying down to the ground. She looked all around, but no help could be found. The dragon drew near with a glint in his eyes and said, Just this once, I'll have witch without fries. But just as he planned to begin on his feast, from out of the ditch rose a horrible beast. It was tall and dark and sticky and feathered and furred. It had four frightful heads. It had wings like a bird. And its terrible voice when it started to speak was a yowl and a growl and a croak and a shriek. It dripped and it squelched as it strode from the ditch. And it said to the dragon, buzz off, that's my witch. The dragon drew back and he started to shake. I'm sorry, he spluttered. I made a mistake. It's nice to have met you, but now I must fly. And he spread out his wings and was off through the sky. Then down flew the bird and 
down jumped the frog, down climbed the cat, and phew, said the dog. And thank you, oh thank you, the grateful witch cried. Without you, I'd be in that dragon's insides. Then she filled up her cauldron and said with a grin, find something, everyone, throw something in. So the frog found a lily, the cat found a cone, the bird found a twig, and the dog found a bone. They threw them all in, and the witch stirred them well. And while she was stirring, she muttered a spell. Ickety, zickety, zaggity, zoom. Then out rose a truly magnificent broom with seats for the witch and the cat and the dog, a nest for the bird and a pool for the frog. Yes, cried the witch, and they all clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick, and whoosh, they were gone. And that is the end of that one. That's a fun one. Did you hear all the rhyming words in that story? Let me move this down. All right, so we did this pumpkin rhyme a few weeks ago when we learned about pumpkins. So let's do it again for Halloween. So we have five little pumpkins sitting on a gate. The first one said, oh my, it's getting late. The second one said, there are witches in the air. The third one said, but we don't care. The fourth one said, let's run and run and run. And the fifth one said, I'm ready for some fun. Ooh, went the wind and out went the lights. And five little pumpkins rolled out of sight. Good job. Now I have five pumpkins that look like this. And then I have five more pumpkins that look like this. What do you think five and five equals if you put them together? Let's count and find out. So if we have one, two, three, four, and five, let's keep counting, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Ten pumpkins all together. You did a good job counting. Our next book is called Pick a Pumpkin. Have you picked out your pumpkin for Halloween yet? Pick a pumpkin from the patch. Tall and lean or short and fat, Vivid orange, ghostly white, or speckled green might be just right. Pumpkin snuggly in your arms, wheel a wagon through the farm. Stop for mugs of spicy punch, toffee apples sweet to crunch. Homeward from the pumpkin patch, all your goodies stacked in back. Now, Brush or wipe your pumpkin clean. Rub it smooth and make it gleam. Find the perfect carving space lined with papers just in case you make a mess. Next, gather other things you need. A bowl, a spoon for scooping seeds, a tool to trace a spooky face, and plastic straws for cutting shapes. Then, Invite round a friend or two. Form a pumpkin carving crew. Let grown-ups cut the top a bit, big enough for hands to fit. Reach down deep into the hole, grab the seeds and give a pull. Lumpy chunks, sticky strings, clumpy seeds, guts and things. With a spoon, scrape sides neatly, clean the inside out completely. Now all together, carve the eyes, giant circles of surprise, small slits sleeping or one eye peeping, cross-eyed, crazy, angry, lazy, and below those make a nose, 
a triangle, a pen prick, a nose that grows from thin to thick. Under the nose is where the mouth goes. A kiss, a frown, a toothy grin, a zigzag gap cut long and thin, a smirk, a smar snarl, an eerie o, or pointy fangs all in a row. Before you light your new creation, first it's time for decorations. Cobwebs strung from post to post, rings of gauzy dancing ghosts, spiders, tombstones, dangling bats, skeletons, and witches' hats. Now quick, slip on gear to trick or treat and grab a snack to hold your sweets. Lift your pumpkin up with pride, march it to a place outside, set it safely on the ground and call the crew to gather round. Ask someone to strike a match, watch the candle's wick will catch. See it glow outside your door, look, it's not a pumpkin anymore. It's a jack-o'-lantern. Its red hot eyes will gaze and flicker. Its fiery grin will blaze and snicker to guard your house while you have fun. Happy Halloween, everyone. Our next story is titled, Gustavo the Shy Ghost. Gustavo was a ghost. He enjoyed doing the normal things that paranormal beings do, passing through walls, making objects fly, and glowing in the dark. But there was nothing in the world that he loved more than playing the violin. Well, almost nothing. Gustavo was secretly in love with Alma, the prettiest monster in town, but he also had a problem. You see, Gustavo was so shy that some things felt incredibly difficult for him. And the worst part of it, making friends was terrifying. Gustavo had never dared to speak to any of the other monsters. He tried getting close to them in many different ways. But even when he was right in front of them, they just couldn't see him. Can you find Gustavo in the pictures? Gustavo longed to be part of something. More than anything, he wanted to make a friend. He ha I have to be brave. I have to let others see me, he thought. So he decided to send a letter, a very special one. Dear Monsters, I would like to invite you to my violin concert, which will take place at the Day of the Dead party next full moon at the cemetery. I would be thrilled to see you there. Gustavo the Ghost. As the days went by, Gustavo couldn't stop thinking. What if no one shows up? What if they don't like my music? What if they don't like me? Except tonight was the night, and this time he couldn't hide. But not a soul had come. So all alone, Gustavo did what he loved most, and the music made him happy, so happy that he glowed. Oh, how he glowed. Gustavo! We're so sorry, we're late. We wanted to get you flowers, but we got lost instead. And then we heard your music, and we saw your glow. We really loved your concert. Would you like to hang out with us? From that moment on, Gustavo's life changed, and everyone discovered that even if he didn't talk much, he was the best at helping and protecting his friends. But mostly Gustavo never stopped surprising them.
and they never stopped loving him. The end. The last story for today is called Ten Spooky Pumpkins, and it is a brand new Halloween book that we just got in at the library. All right, so we counted 10 pumpkins on the gate over here, so let's read about 10 more pumpkins. 10 spooky pumpkins sitting in a line looking for a cat, and they found nine. Nine black cats creeping along the gate looking for a bat, and they found eight. Eight screeching bats soaring in the heavens, looking for a goblin, and they found seven. Seven greedy goblins full of naughty tricks, looking for a ghost, and they found six. Six hollowed ghosts wiggle and writhe, looking for a wolf, and they found five. Five wild wolves running o'er the moor, looking for a skeleton, and they found four. Four foolish skeletons lounging in a tree, looking for a witch, and they found three. Three toothless witches stirring up the brew, looking for a scarecrow, and they found two. Two skinny scarecrows having some fun, dancing in the field with everyone. Then, One full moon rose big and bright. Woo! went the wind, and the creatures ran in fright. Alone was the moon on Halloween night. The wind whispered whish swish, and the gate latched creep. The owl sighed whoo and we were all fast asleep. Well, thank you for joining me for story time. We'll see you again next week.